Welcome to the news hour. The annual United Nations General Assembly met today with the world in the words of Secretary General Antonio Guterres at the point of a quote, great fracture. He wasn't the only one with an unsparing view of the myriad problems faced by many nations. President Biden spoke this morning and sought to reassure underdeveloped nations that the U.S. will help them through these tough times. But his most forceful words were reserved for Russia and its war against Ukraine. White House correspondent Laura Barone Lopez begins our coverage. The General Assembly gathered today under dark clouds of war, climate crisis and inequality. Secretary General Antonio Guterres was blunt. Our world is becoming unhinged. Geopolitical tensions are rising. Global challenges are mounting. And we seem incapable of coming together to respond. 145 world leaders were set to address the group, but leaders from Britain, France, China and Russia were absent. As President of the United States, I understand the duty my country has to lead in this critical moment making the United States the only permanent Security Council member with veto power to address the body. <laughs> President Biden drew applause after he denounced Russia's war as Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky looked on. If you allow Ukraine to be carved up, is the independence of any nation secure? I'd respectfully suggest the answer is no. We have to stand up to this naked aggression today and deter other would-be aggressors tomorrow. Yesterday, Zelensky visited wounded Ukrainian soldiers at a hospital in New York. He criticized the UN for still including Russia in its ranks. If in the United Nations still, it's a pity, but still, there is the place for Russian terrorists, it's the question, not to me, I think it's a question to all the members of the United Nations. This year was Zelensky's first in-person appearance at the General Assembly. While Russia is pushing the world to the final war, Ukraine is doing everything to ensure that after Russian aggression, no one in the world will dare to attack any nation. Weaponization must be restrained. War crimes must be punished. Deported people must come back home and the occupier must return to their own land. We must be united to make it and we'll do it. Slava Ukraine. Even as Biden pledged support in New York, back in Washington, House Republicans are rejecting more aid for Ukraine. Speaker Kevin McCarthy was asked if more money was on the way. Is Zelensky elected to Congress? Is he our president? I don't think I have to commit anything. I have questions for him. Where's the accountability on the money we already spent? What is the plan for victory? At an airbase in Germany today, U.S. military officials addressed reporters on the state of the war. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin and Joint Chiefs Chair Mark Milley took part in a meeting of the Ukraine Defense Contact Group. Contact has been going on for about 90 days, um, and it is taking longer than planners in the war games, etc., with the Ukrainian planners in the war games anticipated. But uh, that's the difference between war on paper uh, and real war. Uh, there are real human beings in real vehicles uh, moving across real minefields, getting blown up, killed, wounded, etc. The flames of war burn on in Ukraine. Last night, Russia launched a drone attack that set warehouses containing food and other supplies on fire and killed one person in the western city of Lviv. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Laura Barone-Lopez.